Okay, so um, I think I am live right now. Um, now, I am doing this quick live because I was talking to a friend today and I promised to myself that I would do an Instagram live and we'll try and do some more of them. So this is my quick Instagram live for Black History Month. Now, I started, the, I, I wanted to do this and I want to try and do something every day or every couple of days to go over a, a little part of black history because my page is all about black history. My website is all about black history. My podcast is all about black history. And as we know, it's Black History Month in America, February, shortest month for the year is Black History Month. So I thought I'd try and bring something. And what I wanted to talk about today is just to celebrate Grenada's Independence Day from the British. Um, you know, Grenada gained its independence from the British on the 7th of February, I believe it was 1973, when it became an independent island in the Caribbean. However, typical for this Black History Month, I then became reminded that I think it was maybe nine years later that Grenada was actually then invaded by America in an operation called Urgent Fury, where America actually invaded and technically waged a war on Grenada um, in order to remove the second prime minister of Grenada, Morris Bishop. Um, and this piece of history here with Morris Bishop and this invasion by America of Grenada is is one is a fascinating piece of history because Maurice or Maurice was trying to change the government in Grenada. He actually decreased unemployment. He increased productivity. He um, got free education for people and he was loved by the people. And however, he however, he was a communist. And as such, um, America just coming out of the Cold War decided to invade. They removed him and poverty went up, education standards went down. And it's a really sad tale because I wanted to tell a great story about Grenada gaining its independence, but less than a decade later, it was invaded. This independent nation was invaded by America and effectively a puppet regime was put in place. And this particular story is quite personal to me because my father is from Grenada and I, and, um, I can say this now because he's no longer here, but my uncle, my father's twin, actually fought in that war against the Americans and had his neck broken um, in that invasion. And he survived that encounter. But it's a very personal piece of history for me and a very um, personal um, occurrence to think that like he was actually involved in that invasion and he could have died. Um, as I say, I can say that now because he's no longer on this earth and so he's past the point of um, prosecution for anything he may have done. But there are still people in Grenada who are missing from that invasion by America. There are still political prisoners in prison. Um, from that invasion by America and um, yeah so I'm just sharing that today so that was the 7th of February Grenadian Independence Day they were then invaded by America in um, 1983 and um, yeah so that's my little slice of black history that's my own personal slice of black history and I'm afraid it's I'm really sorry it's a little bit dark but I think it's gone that way mainly because of this whole Liam Nielsen thing. I ha I saw that story about the comments that he made and I haven't been able to get it out of my mind because it brought chills right the way through my body. Right the way through my body. As someone who has had people close to them killed, by incidents like that. As someone who grew up in the era of Damiola Taylor, who, and and Stephen Lawrence, should I say, not Damiola, Stephen Lawrence in the UK, who was killed by a group of white youths, and I lived not a few miles away from him. To hear, to read that story 
where this guy so casually recounts the tale and actually casts himself almost as the hero by bringing up this alleged crime um, sent chills down my spine. I, I went home from work today and I'm not going to lie, I, I felt a little bit unsafe. It was just a reminder of the type of aggression that there is out there in the world for me and people who look like me and that for anybody who's listening to this who's who thinks that this is a light thing I have to go and send my son out into that world I have to go and send my son into school with parents who may have those type of thoughts. I have to go and send my son to be educated potentially by teachers who feel like that, to be looked after by policemen who feel like that, to be fed by shop workers and supermarket workers who feel like that. And it's not enough anymore for people to just kind of shake their heads and say it's disgusting. It's at the point now where these things have to be challenged by everyone at every turn because it's just unacceptable. It's not a generational thing. It's not a different era. It's not an understandable moment of madness. It is nothing short of mental illness to want to go out and kill someone because of the color of their skin. Nothing short of mental illness. And just like someone who is mentally ill, who is a danger to the public, they are taken away and put in an institution. If you are a racist, if you have thoughts like that, then you should be classified as mentally ill. You are a danger to the public and you should be put away until and medicated until you are fit to be around human beings again. It is unacceptable. This whole excuse about it being from a different generation is nonsense. Liam Nielsen and people of his generation lived through the sexual revolution. They lived through the... They lived through the Cuban Missile Crisis. They lived through the swinging 60s and, and, and the 70s. They lived through the Beatles and free love. You can't live through free love and the Beatles and Vietnam and, and, and Muhammad Ali and, and all of these revolutions. You can't live through that and then tell me that, yeah, it's kind of cool. I just want to go out and kill some black people today. Age is no longer excuse. It's not an excuse anymore. There are no 300-year-old people walking the earth where they can genuinely say they came from a different time. He didn't come from a different time. He's of this time. He's old enough and he knows better. And it is disgusting. It's disgusting that he would say it. It's disgusting that he would try and cast himself as the hero. It's disgusting that anybody would try and justify it. It is disgusting that the newspaper would publish it. It is disgusting that the media outlets would pick it up. Because it's not just that they're not sharing the information. They are inflaming and emboldening other people out there to go and do the same thing. Right now, there is someone looking at a newspaper who's pinning the picture of Liam Nielsen up against his wall and saying, I'll do what you, were, what you weren't brave enough to do, Liam. There are people out there doing it right now. And the journalists and the media outlets know this because they study this there are white papers there are research tons of it documented research that show the effect of the press and news stories on the general public segment you're about to see is taken from an early experiment on learning of, a, of aggressive styles of uh, behavior uh, through modeling. Uh, children uh, watched a, uh, a, a filmed adult uh, perform novel aggressive acts toward a uh, inflated doll and the physical aggression was um, accompanied by uh, novel uh, hostile uh, uh, remarks. We later measured how much of this uh, modeled aggression uh, the children had learned uh, just by uh, watching. Now, the measurement uh, of uh, learning of aggression uh, uses uh, simulated targets rather than uh, live ones. Uh, for example, uh, to test how well bombardiers have uh, learned uh, uh, bombing strategies, 
uh, you would use uh, simulated targets rather than require them to uh, bomb San Francisco or uh, New York. The uh, model pummeled the doll with a mallet, flung it in the air, kicked it repeatedly, threw it down and beat it. We saw it, we saw how it put Trump into power and they are still doing it now. And I'm just sick of them using black people and racism as clickbait. I am not clickbait. My skin color is not clickbait. My, the aggression that I go through is not clickbait. The nonsense that my, my child may have to go through is not clickbait, that my parents went through is not clickbait. It was once widely believed that seeing others vent aggression would drain the viewer's aggressive drive. As you can see, exposure to aggressive modeling is hardly cathartic. That my grandparents went through is not clickbait. I'm not clickbait for you to just spice up a slow news day. I am not clickbait for you to go and promote a movie. Exposure to aggressive modeling increased attraction to guns, even though it was never modeled. Guns had less appeal to children who had no exposure to the aggressive modeling. The children also picked up the novel hostile language. I'm not clickbait for you to get likes on an Instagram post or to feel good in the comments box. That's not what my life is. And I refuse to allow myself or my wonderful history, my wonderful heritage, my love, my beautiful free curly hair, my gorgeous brown skin to be clickbait for someone else's entertainment or for their own monetization. It is disgusting because they know what happens. And so I just implore all of you, where possible, when you see these things, complain instantly. When I put my post up about history, the supremacists out there, I don't even want to say supremacists, the racists out there are quick to report it and get it pulled down. I want every single person listening to this, anyone who's come across this, the second you see this type of nonsense, report it and complain. The second you hear a grandparent talk this type of nonsense, don't just shake your head and walk away. Stand there and fight grandma and granddad down. It's not good enough. When you hear a teacher or a, a policeman or a co-worker and they come up with some filthy microaggression, don't let it slide. Fight them down. And I'm not talking to I'm not talking to black people, people of colour. I'm talking to allies, so-called allies. Fight them down. If you are an ally, then stand with me and take the same hit that I took. I put up a post over the weekend that says if you're an ally, there are allies and then there's Jim Brown. Right? John Brown, sorry. Be a John Brown. Take the hit. Be prepared, be prepared to take the hit if you're an ally. Be prepared because this doesn't end until we have anti-racists on all sides. This doesn't stop. You can't turn around and look someone in the eye and say, like, I'm on your, I'm on your side and then go home and eat dinner with grandma and know that grandma's just going to be talking shit about Vietnam, Vietnamese people or Korean people or black people. You can't do it. It's unacceptable. I'm not accepting it. It's not good enough. It's not good enough to... The, the tiny bit is not good enough. We need people to be as vociferous, as forceful, as strong in the opposite direction to the racists, to the sexists out there, as the people who are for it. It's not good enough just to moan about the Ku Klux Klan. I want to see the anti-Klu Klux Klan run by white people who are ready to go and fight down the Klu Klux Klan. The White Panther program is cultural revolution by any means necessary. Uh, we've drawn up a 10-point program 
first point is uh, full endorsement and support for the Black Panther Party's 10-point program. I didn't really want my first life to be something that felt that was like this or that felt like this, but that story just got to me because off the back of what happened with Justice Smollett, whether you believed it was true or not, that man said he had a, 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 a rope around his neck. That's a lynching. And then Liam Nielsen, a few days later, was in the newspaper talking about going out and killing black people. And it was not a, a, an accident that it has happened in Black History Month. It's not an accident. It's not an accident. That is contrived and that is well-timed. That is an attack on this moment. And so I just implore each and every one of you, just don't have it. I'm not talking about going out and starting beef, but if you're an ally, yeah, allies, you can go out and start beef. But it's no longer time to sit back and just accept it and to just have it and to not say anything anymore. We have platforms, we have voices. If you see something racist, pull it down. You hear something racist, challenge it. You see a microaggression, step in on it. You see someone being abused, step up to the plate. That's all I want to see now. I want to see people stepping up to the plate. And the reason I'm so passionate about this is because when my little boy becomes a teen and when he becomes a man, I don't want him to look me in the face and say, Dad, what did you do? And I have nothing to say. And I have no response to him. I can't tell him that I did anything. I can't tell him that I stood up to anything. I can't tell him that I had a word with anybody. Because the day will come. He will ask me, what did I try to do to make this world a better place for him? And I am damn sure going to have an answer for him. And for any of you who are parents out there, I implore you, make sure you have an answer for your children. Make sure you have an answer for your children when they ask you that question, because they will ask you that question. I know this because I asked my mother that question, and I asked my father that question, and they had answers for me, and I want to be able to have answers for my children. And I want people to be able to have, other people to have answers for my children, and I want to be able to have answers for their children. I want to be able to look them in the eye and say, look, I tried. I did. If it moved the needle 1%, I tried. And that's enough. So, so guys, happy Black History Month, everybody. <laughs> I didn't mean to turn up like that, but I guess this is what happens. Sometimes if, you, if I turn the microphone on and start talking, I can really start talking. So, um... If you haven't already, I have a website. It's blackhistorybuff.com. There's more posts on there. I've got some clothing that I'm experimenting with on there. My podcast is on there. If you listen to podcasts, you'll hear some more Black History in a bit more detail. That's the Black History Buff podcast. I have another Instagram page, which is BHB Media. Um, if you're wondering why the screen is black and you can't see my face, well, it's because I like black, y'all. No, I'm, I'm joking. It's because uh, I'm, I'm shy. I'm not really ready to show my face just yet. I will do it at some point in time. Um, but yeah, for real, like um, I'm going to try and do some of these lives a bit more often so you can get a little bit more of an insight into who I am and um, what I'm about. And I'm going to try and bring some um, Black History shorts just on these lives every day so people can pick it up for those people who the, find the posts are too long or who don't want to tune into the podcast, which is Black History Buff podcast, or who don't want to go to the website and read the blog on blackhistorybuff.com, I'll be doing some lives that you guys can watch. 